Thank you, Jesus. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, God bless all of you who will be joining me for this teaching tonight and uh, ministration because I truly believe those who will listen in, the Lord will really touch your life in a powerful way. Um, I believe that healing is going to be your portion tonight and so I want you all to come in and those of you who will join me on YouTube and other social media platforms I want you to share this video with your family and friends because we need to raise the awareness about uh, the spirit of incest and we're going to look into uh, dump some definitions of incest and child abuse and we're going to look at how this spirit uh, has affected not only young children but adults today um, adults today everywhere uh, especially those have been those that have been abused those who have um, been molested and I believe that the Lord is going to minister to his people tonight so come on in and share the video God bless you God bless you this is prophetess dr. Yvette young better known as lady general um, you can reach me at www.godsroyalwomen.org. G O D S R O Y A L Women. W O M E N. Dot org. Also, you can send me a message at my personal email the personal ministries email which is dr. Yvette Young at God's Royal Women org and so that's how you can reach me if you need to speak with me um, I will include you in my schedule because I believe that there are people out here who are being affected and you have nowhere to go you are experiencing something from your childhood in your adult life you are being affected by what happened in your childhood and we want to address it and we want the Holy Spirit to come and to minister to those of you who will listen in we're going to look at definitions of incest and child abuse uh, the prevalence and the statistics, the characteristics of the perpetrator, the characteristics of incest families, symptoms, and after effects, and uh, some different challenges with the victims uh, of this particular spirit, I'm going to call it, because I know it's a spirit. Many in the medical world or medical field don't know that it is a entity. It is a spirit that comes to attack many, 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 many people. In fact, I had seen uh, in a dream um, some years ago and also recently where this demonic spirit was chasing children. And I saw it I saw what it looked like I saw the beast and I saw him running behind the children and the Lord began to show me by revelation who this spirit was and so today we have to 
be alert today. We have to be on our post uh, as the people of God. I believe God has called us to be the church and not to do church. That's just my, uh, you know, that's biblical. And that's my, my personal belief that as we do church, um, you know how it is in the modern day, we do church. We clock into church. And uh, after we sing a few fast songs, a few slow songs, the modernization of, uh, of, of, of church today, uh, many are not reaching the needs of the people and things that they are walking through. A lot of issues are not being solved, but God will have it to be that your issues and your problems are being solved. And so the Lord wants to minister to his people. And the Lord wants a lot of entertainment and a lot of programs to be moved out of the way so that people can get real ministry. And when you get real ministry, and when you are discipled, your life can take on spiritual speed. And that's why we have to address what's underneath the rug. We have to lift the rug. It's not good enough that we clean around the rug and we don't clean underneath the rug. Amen. And so why we have to address what is broken is because God wants to heal it. It's because God wants to do a new thing. God wants to restore lives. That's what he is all about. He's about restoration. God wants to heal lives. But how many of you know that God makes things beautiful, all things beautiful in his timing? And so a lot of us, we are bypassing, addressing what needs to be addressed. And we're staying in bondage because we refuse to address the hard things or the difficult things or the challenging things. And so we run around and we shout glory, hallelujah, and we slap neighbors and we, we, we give high fives and we, we shout real loud and we go to every program uh, we clock in real good and we we pay our tithes and we pay our offering But how many of you know that there are people that are still hurt and still abused and and still walking through What they experienced as a child in their adult life because they have not had the healing They have not had the restoration Amen when you go into a spiritual hospital there are some things that must be addressed even spiritual surgery you have to deal with, you know, certain matters differently from other matters, okay? And so I am one who uh, believes in the full gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe in deliverance. I believe in healing. I believe in casting out devils. I believe, listen, I believe in prosperity. I believe in the fullness. And I believe that if we would really begin to get into a place in the church, amen, where lives can be healed i mean after we dissect things we go in and we use the glory of god the, the anointing of god to break real yokes destroy real bondages and help people to heal uh sometimes when people have gone through sexual abuse sometimes listen this is not an overnight event where you will be healed overnight. Sometimes God does things in a sovereign way where his sovereignty will allow everything to, to become whole at one point or at one moment. But that's really not the way that God moves. God is a God of process. And so you will hear me say often, uh, you will hear me say a lot about the process, the processing of God. It's because there are times he will take you through and he will walk with you through the river, through the fire, through the waters, through the storm. Amen. And so that's why he said, if, if you build it upon the rock, you will be found standing. Uh, nothing will be able to sink you. But if your foundation is not built upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, then when the storms do come, he didn't say he was going to remove the storm. He said when the storms come into your life, if you're not founded upon the rock, Jesus Christ, then you will not be able to handle, you will not be able to handle uh, when the enemy is sending arrows and attacking your life 
uh, from every direction. And so we're going to talk about incest. We're going to talk about it. And so I want you to invite people on. Today there is what you call spiritual incest as well. And I may hit a little bit on that, but that is going to be probably in part two, uh, where people are sleeping with their spiritual fathers and uh, spiritual mothers are sleeping with their spiritual sons. We're going to talk about spiritual incest and the curse that it brings upon a person's life and the curse that it brings upon a person's ministry and everything that you touch, amen, uh, uh, will not prosper because it is something that, uh, you know, is an abomination in, in, in as such. You know, when you begin to, uh, you know, take those things that are holy and pollute those things and defile those things, then the blessing cannot come. And so here, why we need to go into these areas is because everybody's shouting the blessing and the miracle, and we want that. We want that because we, as the children of God, need to receive from our Father. But how many of you know that there are things that is going on if we do not clean, if we do not clean those areas, if we, if you know, th think about it, <laughs> if we cleanse the outside and we don't go into the cracks and the crevices of areas on our body then that's going to create a stench and there's a stench in the body of Christ when we allow things to go on and we don't address it because we don't want certain folk to leave the church or we don't want to offend anyone but that's why Jesus said blessed are those who are not offended in me Jesus is coming to clean house and so every time he comes, he's coming to what? Beautify his people. He's come to edify his people. He's coming to place them, you know, in a different status or a different standard, so to speak. He's coming to remove us from one place and move us into another level. Glory to God. And so Jesus is always about cleaning his house up and healing his house. But if you run away from the cleansing or if you run away from the purging process, then you will not be fit. You, you will not be fit. What am, I, what am I saying right there? What am I saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus is coming for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And so I don't think many understand what that means. I think they are just taking, you know, the word of God and saying, uh, God bless all of you who are coming in, who are listening. God bless you, uh, Brother Harold from Texas. God bless you. But God is always in He's always in the mode of perfecting his body. This is why he sent a fivefold ministry. He sent a fivefold ministry of his giftings to the church, to edify the church, to perfect the church, to teach the church, train the church, equip the church so that we can what? Be established in his kingdom. Glory to God. And so here we have to address issues. Many today are in the house of God and they are still holding on to what happened to them. And they don't even know why. Some of you have children who have been touched and you don't even know why they're acting out. And you know, today we just want to say, okay, forget it. We're not going to, we're not going to focus on it. We're not going to think about it. But lives are being destroyed and Satan is loving the idea or the fact that we want to address it. Or here, here's where, where he is very happy when we are not on our post to block him from, you know, doing his assignment in the lives of, of, of humanity and, and especially in the church of Jesus Christ. And so uh, for the past 40 years, uh, the, the topic of incest has been uh, almost like taboo. You can't talk about it. It's something that people uh, feel very uncomfortable uncomfortable about speaking uh, in these terms of incest but you know incest let me just go ahead and and talk about it um, because there's great trauma from the spirit of incest and so again you can take psychology and you can you know uh, you know not look at it in a spiritual light but I'm going to give you both sides of the spectrum because there is a demon spirit there everything in the kingdom of darkness is about uh, only three things only three things to steal kill and destroy and no matter no matter how he go about doing it that's all his mission is in your life against your life against your family 
It's all about stealing from you, uh, killing you, or destroying your life. And he will go about any means and any length to make sure that he bring that to pass. And so we need to understand what incest is, what child abuse is. It's two total different uh, definitions. Some uh, definitions of incest and child abuse are uh, incest is sexual intercourse between blood relatives, um, different inappropriate acts or acts with sexual overtones. Um, by one or more persons who assert authority and power over that child through ongoing emotional bonding with that particular child. Um, the persons referred to are called uh, perpetrators. And so, hence, we have a lot of perpetrators today in the church. Uh, these are people who have uh, been victims themselves. Some of them, I would say not the entire uh, you know, statistic of perpetrators being victimized as children, but I would say a very high percentage of those who are uh, perpetrators have been a victim, have been touched, have been molested as a child. Um, so these persons can be parents or other family members, siblings, peers, teachers, religious representatives, babysitters, uh, just for an example. Okay, and so the difference between child abuse and incest is that incest, in incest, the perpetrator is family. And with child sexual abuse, it can be by anyone. Okay, and so um, I want you to look at this because 44% uh, of incestuous men who are having sexual contact with their own children are also having sex with other children outside the home. And... Um, who they're not related to. And I want to talk about this because you have a lot of people today who don't know their identity because they were touched as a little child. And it opened the door for the enemy to come in and to twist some things in their life. They are unaware of this. Some are. Some are coming into the truth and some are coming into the light of what is going on. Uh, what has transpired spiritually, okay? Um, but I will say again, there are many perpetrators in the church who are touching children. And we can ignore it all we want, but the Holy Ghost will not ignore it. Human beings will ignore anything that rubs them the wrong way. Human beings will try to avoid uh, issues uh, that brings maybe a soft spot or a sore spot but the more we ignore the less we can get he the healing and the deliverance I'm sorry this is a secret trauma that many men and women are going through right at this very moment uh, this trauma can last for many 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 years and it affects your love relationships as an adult and many of you are adults and you are being affected negatively your relationships are being ruined because we fail to help people with what has happened to them in their childhood when we talk about foundational issues and foundational problems foundational issues it goes beyond the surface and so you know i'm not a fan of people that only you know put a band-aid on things because if we don't go down on the inside and dig deep the bible says the deep on the inside of me is calling out for the deep in god which means that there are places in the realms of the spirit there are places in your life even uh, that needs to be open and exposed so that it can be in a position of receiving what it needs to be made whole. Some of you are not whole as adults because that little boy and that little girl on the inside of you have never been healed, never been healed. And so you disassociate what happened to you 
and you take on uh, this idea that with time all things heal but it is not the truth it is not the truth and this is why the Lord wants to expose this area so that the lives of children and the lives of adults teenagers uh, alike can be healed many people in the church today talk about uh, people are bipolar by uh, schizophrenic and don't even understand that there was an open door into your life from a child when you were exposed to this particular spirit many children are acting out today in school want to commit suicide and all sorts of different uh kinds of you know demonstrations from their life uh because they are going through we we have to raise awareness they are going through and so uh, many people have mental illness issues today because what went on in their childhood so you may be 45 50 and still dealing with what was never healed and so when you understand anything about trauma from a spiritual standpoint not the medical or the psychological when you understand what trauma does trauma is a major open door to what the demonic kingdom because what they do is they snapshot that trauma and that is a portal that causes demons to flood in an individual's life and so you know um some of these issues yes we can talk to people and try to sit them down and become their shrink and talk to them for year after year uh, you know, and they never really reach that place of real true healing and deliverance because it's more than just letting a person talk about their issues. It's dealing with the root, what happened at the origin, at the, 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 the influx of what happened to them when that trauma happened, what came in their life. And so from a spiritual standpoint, something came into your life when you were touched when you were raped when you were uh violated and so <laughs> we're going to talk about these things because the name of my show is upfront talk we're going to talk so that we can identify so that we can evaluate and assess and so that we can open our lives to the spirit of the living god so that he can come in heal restore make brand new amen and make you whole take you out of these prisons that you some of you don't even know that you're in a prison of what happened to you from a child and now you're an adult and you're reacting in all your relationships you can keep a relationship uh, none of your relationships are prospering um you know it's always one thing after the next and broken relationship all over the place and hey a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand it will never stand amen sister Kimberly and so we have to understand that if we just overlook what is happening in the lives of, of, of the children and what happened in your life what happened what really took place if we just overlook it I promise you that we will not get to the hidden areas of the soul and allow God to heal those areas uh, we want to look into this and so uh, let's go let's go even further if you have any questions any concerns I want you to uh, go ahead and type those out one in three girls one in seven boys statistically um, have been sexually abused by the age of 18 now we're doing church and we look real good because we know how to put on everything and we know how to look real good and all that's good nothing is wrong with that but there is something wrong with one in three girls and one in seven boys being touched before the age of 18 there is something seriously wrong with this picture and so here go we have people doing church but we're not covering our children and so while you're singing on the front line and you're singing and leading worship who's touching your child where is your child 
while you come in the intercessory uh, team every Thursday night or Wednesday night, where's your child? What's happening with, with your child? What happened with you when your mother left you to go to church? We're going to talk about these things. My God, the typical sex offender will molest at least 117 children on an average. And most do not report the offense. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to tell you something. See, when incest and child sexual abuse was examined out of the United States, there are staggering numbers that goes way past 117 children on the average. So while we are doing church, the devil is hunting for the lives of your children. Listen, people of God, this is nothing to be afraid of. This is something to be prepared for. This is something to open your eyes to. If you want to close your eyes and the very thing that God gave you to be a gift in your life, while you are doing church, you don't know who's with your child. You leave your children with anyone. I promise you, I am a survivor. So I am talking from not only study and research, but experience. And I want somebody to know today that our children are our responsibility. I refuse to lose my home while I'm saving the lives of every other person's home. It will not be that way. Ministers today have let the wolves and let the lions come in and steal and kill and destroy their children. And so this is a problem. Now we're going to look at the characteristics of a perpetrator. Perpetrators on the pews, perpetrators on the organs, perpetrators behind the pulpit, perpetrators in the choir, or ushering, deacons, bishops, apostles, listen, prophets, perpetrators, perpetrators, people who have a proclivity in their, in their flesh that... Uh, has never been dealt with, never been delivered. And so uh, these are people who some, again, from the very beginning of the message, I told you that there is a major the majority have been a victim. So the perpetrator, uh, you know, the majority have been a victim at some point in their lives as well and never were healed, never were uh, delivered, uh, never uh, looked into getting help. Uh, with that issue uh, most of them say with time you know things will heal but I, I come to tell you that it doesn't work that way only Jehovah can heal you he is the Lord God who healing he's Jehovah Rafi Jehovah Rohi he is the God who heals God will heal the inside of your being he will heal your physical your mental your spiritual your emotional God is the one who heals and so uh, there are many commonalities uh, in in the perpetrators and why am I saying this is because people need deliverance now you know I believe in deliverance I believe that deliverance is a children's bread I am so grateful to the Lord God Almighty for delivering my life and not only that he is a God who wants to see the perfection of his body and and so he is after beautifying giving you beauty for your ashes he is a god who don't want to leave you where he found you he wants to take you and beautify you fix you up clean you up purge you up get you scrubbed up amen take you through the fire let the impurities surface so that as they surface now he can deal with those impurities and beautify your life and you are not only beautiful on the outside or the exterior you are beautiful from the inside there is no proclivity in your life and so perpetrators are in the pulpit perpetrators are everywhere i'm talking to the church not the world because we don't minister to the world we have to get the world saved first amen we minister amen to those in the body who need administration who need anointing to destroy yokes in their lives and so uh, some of these are, are dependent, inadequate, and have family history of conflict, 
abuse, abandonment, exploitation. Alcoholism is a factor, a huge factor in 90% of the abuse cases and 46% uh, uh, are alcoholics. And so some were sexually abused. Um, you know, again, I said that already that uh, a lot of the perpetrators were sexually abused themselves. And so uh, in some cases they never uh, really followed up with things or went to court, uh, you know, and so just left things untreated. And so uh, some perpetrators have just unmet needs that's going on in their lives. Uh, they're looking for closeness or they're looking for affection and, and they can't find it. They have proclivities. They have things that are riding their back and they don't know what to do with them. And this is why uh, if the statistics are this high, that means there's a problem. That means something is out of order. Something is malfunctioning. That means there's an infection somewhere that needs, that we, that needs to be addressed. There are things that need to be addressed in the church because the church was never designed to be a place of uh, so-called professional um, entertainment or, or, or programs that really are powerless to heal the inner man. Uh, church was designed to be a spiritual hospital and so if people are coming in with these kinds of issues they need to be addressed you do not need to send people in the church to the world not that the world don't have anything to give but understand that this is a kingdom of God and so it has different rules it has different laws it has different uh, ways of administering healing and so if you go to the world they may tell you one thing but if you go into the church they may tell you a complete different thing because it's a different entity and so today we have people who are full of bloodline demons, bloodline curses, curses that need to be addressed. Um, people who uh, were neglected, people who were abused physically, people who were beat down, people who were neglected by parents, uh, you know, people who were just ran through like a train. I know people who have been molested by the uncle, by the father, by the cousin, by, you know, seven to ten people in their family. And so you not understanding that people are emotionally today disturbed and broken because of what happened in their history, the foundation of their lives. And so we're treating people uh, and really diagnosing the wrong thing because here, if we only get down to the foundation and the root of our lives, we can go and do a search. It's the same matter when you go to the hospital, they take your blood and they find out what is in your blood because your blood is speaking about what is actually happening in your DNA what's going on in your system and so it's able to identify what's going on we have to uh, you know be able to identify uh, the issues of of the people of God I mean if not if not if we choose to keep doing church the way we have been doing church that will continually and consistently uh, you know remain a broken bunch of people just shouting real loud and dancing real good looking real good on the outside but broken down amen on the inside and that is not what Christ has for his church he is coming to heal his church he's coming to deliver his church he's coming to beautify his church and there was a process of getting that to actually be in the condition of human beings not only in the position and so the church has been shouting real loud about what Jesus did for us and Jesus is saying will you allow me to get it into your condition so that your condition can change and be altered and transformed uh, it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough that we just do church. We have to really begin to get information, to get understanding for the people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So it is not enough that we do church. It's not enough that we're on a committee board. It's not enough that we're on a deacon board. It's not enough that we're coming to every program. It's not enough we're going to every convocation, every conference. Why is anybody getting healed for real? Is anybody going to ever get cleaned up for real? You know, are we ever going to get beyond the cosmetics of things? Are we ever going to get real for real so that people's lives can be transformed? So emotionally immature, uh, the sexual offender does not know how to have adult sexual relationships. Some of you have uh, relationships today and uh, some of you are having issues in your sexual relationships. 
um <laughs> you know you're you're looking for gratification but you can't find it a lot of times people uh you know really go into alcohol and drugs uh because they are looking for an outlet to medicate what they are experiencing or what they're feeling um you know a lot of uh perpetrators or they feel powerless they feel like they can't control themselves they feel like you know uh something is 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 hovering over them some dark cloud is or some voice is speaking to them to have them to do things that some of them don't even want to do themselves so again um many are what they call uh psychotic and they don't know what is wrong with their lives and they go into the medical system where big pharma is producing her drugs and you get on drugs and you become addicted to drugs and now you're going to church and you're hearing the message but yet you are addicted to drugs you're dip you're addicted to morphine or you're addicted to you know some sort of prescription drug because now you're trying to medicate what was never addressed from the initial violation and so there's a combination of characteristics that can occur um uh but it goes beyond just therapy it has to be something that people are willing to open up and get beyond the shame. It's the same with pornography. You cannot hide it and act or believe or think that you're going to get help with the problem. Problems must be confronted and number two, they must be acknowledged in order to be addressed. And I'll just say something right there, okay? They, they, they have to be confronted. They must be acknowledged uh, in order to be addressed. And so um, there are different characteristics of the incestuous family. Um, you know, there's no absolute type, um, but there are some commonalities. Again, um, you know, there's the father-daughter incest. Uh, you know, since it's one of the most common uh, studies of the incestuous family is uh, fairly recent, but nevertheless, um, is is multi, um, you know, factorial in the origin, and so there are some similarities. You have uh, those families who is found to be socially and physically and psychologically isolated from the outside, and the family members are very enmeshed. They're very engaged in one another's life, overly uh, dependent, and um, you know, um, listen. There are different kinds, and then you have the kind of family that is uh, very unemotional and uh, not very physical. Um, so you have some uh, observations that the chaotic family or the family who appears to be normal, um, they're really not normal because there are some things that's going on they it's like all these things are on hush hush there are some secrets in the family and so tonight uh listen the lord is saying to you that the secrets in your family is keeping you bound a lot of people don't want to open up what goes on in their family or they want to keep it on hush hush but hush hush never got anybody free and so if you want to be delivered you're going to have to begin to open up and talk to somebody uh, a lot of families are sworn into secrecy about things things that went on and so a lot of times these are familiar spirits that are traveling down the fo uh, the family line and so the job of a strong man is to stay in that particular family and to rule every person to affect every person one way or the other especially to get into the next generation and so some of your children are experiencing some of the same things that you experience because the spirit has never been dealt with or kicked out of that particular family then you have the chaotic family uh, is the prototype and a uh, prototype and is characterized by problems spanning generations, uh, low socio uh, economic standing, marginal functioning of the numbers. You have criminal involvement, substance abuse, welfare involvement, low education level, vocational um, in, uh, inadequacies. For example, the children from the chaotic family are mostly unsupervised by adults and they pretty much raise themselves. They care for each other and are quite dysfunctional. So you have the normal appearing family uh, seems to 
function well it seems to function well and have everything together uh, they may uh, even have a higher social standing education and vocational status but internally my god however the parents are unable to nurture and uh, the children become very needy the children become uh, alienate, alienated from the emotional makeup listen your children need your emotional input they need they, they need their emotional banks filled you know you, it's not just enough that you're making a lot of money for your child and you don't spend time with them and so because of the work schedules today where you're not being paid enough money you need two and three and four jobs today and so the children are left behind you know uh, in the care of relatives or friends or some of you are uh, leave them in the care of people you don't even know and these things become very much so prevalent and so uh, children in this type of family often become little adults and they take on adult roles in the family so the children are at a high risk of sexual abuse from family members as well as outsiders and so hence if we do not look into what's happening in the lives of your children naturally and spiritually uh, this generational curse the same thing that happened to some of you will happen to your children unless you cut it and snip it in the bud in the realm of the spirit there is a lot of prayer that has to go on over the life of your child you have to be up 12 o'clock 1 o'clock playing for your children I'm not understanding today while we're sleeping the enemy is sowing tears in their dreams and serpents and dragons are attacking them spiritual husbands spiritual wives are marrying your children in a dream and you don't even know you're not even asking the Lord to show you what's happening in the dreams of your children and the Lord wanted me to come on today not to yell at you but to teach you to show you something because you have to go on the alert when it comes down to your children your children the enemy is fighting he never waits until they become a teenager he starts even sometimes at conception or even while in the womb and then when they come out he begins to attack them from the cradle to the grave they are attacked because no one is attacking what's it what is following them or hindering them or attacking them from even your generational line that you never dealt with you never dealt with it you never dealt with it and so and so and so we we want to deal with it today we want to talk about it because if you can understand it then you will become more alert to address these things now perpetrators I want to talk to you out there whomever you may be you know that you have uh, committed this violation against someone uh, and you have been uh, a victim as well I want to talk to you um, being a victim is is not your fault you're a victim you're victimized and so hence why we're trying to stop the reception uh, of that we don't want that to continue the continuation we want uh, less victims as possible it's that's why I'm addressing this so the Lord wants to reach down inside of you inside of your spirit and your soul and God wants to bring a deliverance to you as a perpetrator you're sitting in church you're very gifted you can play the organ you can you can preach the house down you can preach the house on fire but you love little kids pet, pet, you know you're a pedophile and you know it but you are afraid to talk to someone about this because you yourself were you victimized and that was a door that opened you up to begin to attack children um, uh, or touch someone in your family God wants to heal you God wants you to repent and God wants to touch your life and deliver you God wants to deliver your life he wants to deliver your eyes he wants to deliver you from the inside and get that spirit that had uh, gained an entrance into your life to cause your life to go down this path and you're with a wife but yet you're thinking about a child you're with a husband but yet you're thinking about being with a little boy uh, many men have been molested as children a woman just put them on uh, top of them or, or a woman sucked their little you know wee wee and and just opened up the door for many demonic spirits to flood in that 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 man's life or, or that child's life there are things that are happening and we as the church Ooh, slap your neighbor high five 
and the devil is wreaking havoc in the lives of your children because you are not even thinking amen you're not alert that the enemy is after your child you're not on your post in that regard and i'm coming to sound the alarm because there are some symptoms and there are some after effects that you need to look into because there was a study done and they concluded that 40 percent of victims of child sexual abuse actually had serious enough trauma to require adult mental health counseling hear what i just said that will require uh, adult mental health counseling issues identified were watch this watch this the issues that were identified with trust and intimacy issues depression suicidal tendencies substance abuse and dependency eating disorders low self-esteem guilt anger self uh, mutilation or destructive disorders feelings of alienation and being different and more lonely hence this is a major open door incest is a major open door so i'm not just talking about your children i'm talking about what happened to you the open door that came into your life that you have never talked to anyone about that is causing you to be depressed today or have trust issues in your life and intimacy issues in your life and low self-esteem in your life as an adult parent. What am I talking about? I'm talking about something that is generational. When it happened to you and you did not get help with it, you did not get the healing from the event, then it translated or transferred into these destructive disorders and now your children are highly highly uh susceptible to this particular spirit because if it was never addressed spiritually then watch this that thing uh is still in your family waiting to open up the door to attack your children so I'm coming to give enlightenment and knowledge for you to look into this stuff because, listen, you need to begin to gain as much knowledge as you can about the spiritual world, how it works, uh, and then you have to become on the alert so that the same trauma that happened to you will not happen to your children while you in church slapping your neighbor high five. Glory to God. Now, we have to begin to pray more. We have to begin to ask God to reveal where the enemy is and where he's going to attack. You need to get spiritual intelligence. You need to begin to get inside information. And the only way you can do that is to be close to the Father. The Lord wants to reveal some things to you. He wants you to become a sharpshooter in the realm of the spirit. He wants you to have straight up precision. I'm talking about precision in the spirit realm so that when the enemy is setting up a trap, is setting up a snare, for your children amen that you will begin to identify that thing even before it happens and smash it in the realm of the spirit and so i i am putting out this alarm tonight to help someone amen and so victims can have unhealthy sexual behaviors inability to engage in normal sex watch this watch this people of god they can be confused sexually their identity a lot of homosexuals a lot of lesbians were touched as children and that was an open door that led them to the behaviors of a homosexual and a lesbian it opened the door for the spirit of perversion to come in and as the spirit of perversion came in most times demons don't travel as one demons travel in a pack which means you have lust perversion homosexuality lesbianism uh inordinate affection you have fornication adultery masturbation they all traveling together now whichever one manifests now that's 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 where we begin to see what is what 
okay so it doesn't mean that all of those groupings are not inside of a human being or attach yourself to a human being it means that if if a person is manifesting lesbian tendencies then that's the spirit that is manifesting through that individual I know I'm talking good right here because a lot of people are screwed up in the mind because of what happened to them as a child that they were never able to process the whole traumatic event and they didn't know that they were open spiritually to something all they knew is what uh, maybe the counselor told them but they didn't know that there are spiritual repercussions to the doors being opened and I'm going to come back and give you a teaching on guarding your gates and how to effectively do that so that you can be properly covered uh, with the warfare of artillery on you know God has given us weapons helmets you know shields and and, and breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the preparation of gospel of peace. He said, the sword of the spirit, above all, take the shield of faith. Why in the world do we have an armory? Why do we have to be clothed in righteousness? Why? It's because we are in a spiritual battle. And so that can be um, all kinds of uh, different experiences in uh, and symptoms um, in the after effects when a person has been touched. Uh, people have flashbacks and reoccurring memories or nightmares or they may have impaired memory for the abuse that is due to dissociation. So uh, whatever the symptoms are, they are always painful and stressful and necessitate long and difficult treatment. Now, we know that God is a healer and God can heal and God wants to deliver and God wants to heal his people, even adults today, adults, adults today. A lot of people don't want to hear this because they want to think that they're okay. But a lot of times when you think you're okay, you're really not. It's because you need, you need tending to. When you go to the doctor, you want the nurses and the doctors to tend to your problem. And so, hence, when you come into the church, you don't want to shout and scream. You want someone to tend to your problem, to bring a solution, to bring a cure, to help you get out of whatever is holding your life uh, and whatever sickness or malady or malfunction. You want something uh, to be healed in your life or transformed in your life. And so incest and child sexual abuse can leave the victim with many long-term effects. Okay. And so I want you to begin to ask the Lord to show you where the enemy is hiding in your life and in your children's life. Okay. Um, uh, they are uh, variable with, with, with uh, each victim and have many other factors making it critical that um, we have to begin to assess every individual. A lot of people today have proclivities and um, they're very gifted, but they have proclivities, proclivities to the same sex. And um, some want that issue to be taken care of. Again, Jesus came to set the captive free, but the captive must also desire to be free. What am I saying? There are some people who don't want to be free from the effects of the incest or the effects of the child sexual abuse in their adult life. There are some who um, have accepted that their identity is now, uh, you know, homosexual or a lesbian. But I can assure you that no one was born that way. Uh, no one was born that way. Everything God did was was perfect. If there's any twisting of the perfectionist, because there was a fallen angel uh, by the name of Lucifer. Now he's Satan, uh, but he is able to twist and blind the minds of human beings, and he's doing it everywhere. And his principle. All right, we're back on. So, uh, people of God needs deliverance everywhere. Deliverance is a children's bread. If you're not a child of God, then I can understand you're not de uh, desiring deliverance. Deliverance is beautiful. Deliverance is amazing. I don't know why we've twisted the whole idea and the whole view of deliverance ministry is absolute amazing. I think people don't want to get into it because they are scared of or they are afraid of retaliation. But if deliverance is amazing. It can transform your life once you kick those devils out, those entities out. 
there you know now the holy spirit can come in your air in the area where the demon left my god and he can fill your temple and today the holy ghost is not filling a lot of temples today because there's demons there that need to be kicked out of the soul and out of the body and i'll talk about uh, the anatomy of how that works i'll come back and show you uh, how demons get in and how where they reside and how they impact your soul and your body um, as a Christian a Christian your spirit uh, Has been regenerated recreated with Christ when you accepted Christ But your body and your soul is being saved and so while you're walking this thing out You're walking out of what you came out of uh, before you accepted Christ. Amen And so, uh, you know the symptoms briefly can be summarized uh, as acute anxiety, rage, guilt, fear, compulsive behaviors, rebelliousness, fear of sleeping or sleeping alone in the dark, sadness or lethargy, uh, memory impairment, confusion, delinquent behavior, depression, lack of trust, low self-esteem, denial, blunted emotions, abandonment issues, multiple personalities, social withdrawal. Uh, acting out behaviors, nightmares, sleep disturbances, suicidal feelings are acting out, eating disorder, sexual acting out, borderline and psychotic states, post-traumatic stress disorder, sex play and sexual um, aggressiveness, seductiveness, fear of uh, sexual behavior, self-mutilation, substance abuse, and others. Um, I'm talking something right here because not only for your children, but some of you as adults are acting out these uh, personalities and behavior characteristics. As adults in your adult relationships is because if you were a victim and were not healed then this is uh, the fruit this is the results of you not being healed uh, physical effects can range from genital lacerations cuts bruises sexual transmitted diseases swelling internal damage from insertion of objects difficulty urinating or bedwetting GI symptoms pain nausea stomach cramps nightmares night terrors migraines um, disassociation we're gonna come back on part two but I'm just giving you this because a lot of the children that are going through these things you're beating them up and whipping them and don't even know that they were touched I don't even know that they were molested by someone who probably instilled fear in them if they opened up their mouth. We want to come back and talk about this. But what I want to say to you is that I have something for you. I have a CD for you. And this CD was designed by God. He said, I want my people to learn how to pray for their children. And to cut off the inception of where the enemy would like to come in their life. A lot of times the enemy attacks children in their dream world so that he can get away with things without you knowing so you want to begin to ask the Lord to reveal what is going on in their dream world because they are seeing things and you need to know what they're seeing you need to know what is attacking them and so um, my husband if you can come over here and help me to get this because I want to show you something uh, the Lord just dropped it in my spirit I want to ask you uh, to go and to order this particular fire prayers for those of you who are pregnant, those of you who have children, and those of you who are adults who have been affected by this spirit of incest. Fire prayers. It's on the edge here. And um, it's fire prayers for pregnant women. And this is what it looks like if you go to the website. Okay. Fire prayers. You see two women. This is what it will look like if you go to the website. Um, fire prayers for expecting mothers. Children are your gift from God and anything that comes from God anything that is dedicated and committed to God is uh, Challenged by the enemy and so you're going to need intense prayer matter uh, uh, Remediation to diffuse the enemy's power and the projection against their life now This CD is so powerful. I'm telling you it will bless your life to show you how to pray for your children Okay now, I'm showing you this um, not to get your money, but to help you to guard the lives of your children much better. Okay, guard the gates of the lives of your children. Your children cannot fend for themselves. Their parents 
you have the responsibility to do it right now and then teach them how to guard themselves and how to pray and how to fight in the spirit how to plead the blood how to curse uh the works of darkness how to utilize the word of god as the sword of the spirit how to put on christ you need to teach your children these things and so i want people who are pregnant people who have children and people who were affected by these spirits as a young child yourself if you were in an incestuous relationship or a child abuse situation you need to learn the effective way of praying and i am about raising people up to another level another status in the realms of the spirit and you know you're going to have to begin to understand investing in yourself i didn't say send me a seed i said now get this product and invest in your life and let this be downloaded in your spirit let your children be covered by the realm by, by your prayer and by god sending angels to uh look out after them when you're not able to be with them because you're working but those of you who are going through right at this moment because you did not get the healing from someone touching you the Lord is touching your life right now my God the Lord is healing your life right now because you are in here because you are listening and those of you who will listen on YouTube the spirit of the living God is coming to that place right now in your soul and he's going to heal that part he's going to heal the memory he's gonna he's gonna remove amen he's gonna remove uh, the power that have attached you to the pain of that experience God is going to bring a mighty deliverance into your life and I declare to you that you will be set free to have prosperous relationships beautiful relationships relationships that will bring you joy and that you'll be able to know how to handle people and that this year this year will be a fruitful year for you because the Lord is healing you right now and I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that your children will be spared from the destruction of the enemy. I declare and decree to you that those of you who have identity challenges, you are struggling. You don't want to be a homosexual. You don't want to be a lesbian. Well, there's deliverance for you and God will deliver you and set you free and raise you up and use your testimony to get so many others out there who have been touched and who have been molested and who have had their identity misconstrued because they were touched. And God will remove all the proclivities from you I promise you he will God will deliver you and he will take all the residue off your life you know there are some people who say they're delivered but they still look like and act like what they came out of listen God is going to take even the residue off your life he's going to break that thing out of your generational realm tonight is your night people of God those of you who need extra uh, uh, counseling go ahead and call me or or get in touch with me you can have a one-on-one -on -one with me go to www godsrawyourwomen.org and i'm here to help assist you to get the full freedom that you need to be all that god has called you to be because a lot of people can never go where god wants them because they are still hurt and bound and they're still i'm telling you the inside is a mess and god will not bless a mess but god wants to bring wholeness into your life god wants to deliver your mind god wants to set you free from the memory god wants to deposit something brand new on the inside of your spirit god wants to give you the power to rise up amen and be a giant in the realms of the spirit today is your day people of god i want you to receive the healing of god those of you who are in the church and you know that this spirit is riding you because you were touched and you was molested by your uncle by your auntie by your mother by your father Listen, Listen, there is healing for you. God is going to minister to your life. He's going to minister to you. Mm, mm. He's going to touch every part, every part of you. Yes, he will. When God came after you, he found you. And he found you just as you were. My God. He did not say that you had to be clean before he found you or before he came after you. He said, I'm going to catch this fish right here and then I'm going to go through the process, my God, of, of cleaning it piece by piece so that I can fillet this thing. Amen. And when I serve it up, my God, oh, he will present you without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, my God. You in the body of Christ, you need to be healed. You need to be delivered because some of you are so 
twisted in your mindset. You cannot move forward in relationships because of what happened to you. I came to prophesy your deliverance today. And if you can only touch by faith and reach out and believe the anointing of the Lord God is upon your life to bring in healing, to bring in deliverance. Uh, I want you to come to the website to get material to invest in your life. I want you to connect with me. I want you to get a one-on-one -on -one with me. I want you to begin to come on, come on, allow me to minister to the inward part that you refuse to allow anybody to get into. Come on, come on, come on. Let God get into those places and let God bring about a restoration that you will have a bona fide deliverance, a, a bona fide transformation and nothing the enemy will ever be able to put back on your life because when God make you free, he's not just setting you free, he is making you free that you never go back into that situation. And I'm calling for the church to come out of homosexuality. I'm calling for the church to come out of lesbianism because the Lord wants to set you free today and the Lord has power enough to break that spirit off of you. Every spirit that came in because you were molested. I call that demon out of your life today. Check out in the name of the Lord. I call for your full identity in Jesus Christ to come upon your life and God will beautify you. My God. Right now, there is something happening. I see a great deliverance going on in your homes. I'm telling you, there are people who are going to listen to this by way of YouTube. Your children are being delivered. I'm sending out, I'm sending out a blanket of God's protection over your life today. In the name of the Lord, let God bring healing right now into your life. I promise you that your life will never be the same. I want the church to be aware of what's going on and stop hiding behind religiosity. Stop hiding behind doing church. Come on, people. We are going to rise up and be the church of Jesus Christ. We are going to rise up. I am prophetess. I'm prophetess Dr. Yvette Young. And I want you to come and talk to me. I want you to send me your prayer requests. I want you to know that we are praying for you. I want you to invest in getting them to know how. This is a beautiful project. How to pray. Mothers, come on. Come on. Pray for your children. Come on. Come on, pray for them. You're away from them. You're at work. Come on, pray for them. Learn how to pray the right prayer. You need fire prayer. You need real power to pray and break the chains of darkness off of their lives. In the name of Jesus, come and see me. God bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.